So when we speak about brokenness instead of a hard heart in a Christian's life and a healthy preparation of our hearts in Hosea 10, um, you know, we are talking about uh, the correct relationship with God and, uh, and, and how that happens. And one of the prerequisites of that, of course, is humility in the believer's life. And, uh, you know, the best way that that happens is if the Word of God imparts that to us. If the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts through the Word and, and, and helps us see our need for uh, God to be placed above us and us to be under Him. That's the easiest and the best way. If we are proud and if we stick to our pride, then life will humiliate us. But that is a harder, uh, a harder, a much harder way. And honestly, I recommend uh, trusting the word and eating the word and being edified by the word and being changed by the word for all of us because, uh, gosh, it's just so much an easier way uh, for you, for me, for all of us. God help us with that. And welcome to this morning, Job, today. Um, in uh, Job 11, it's actually one of Job's friends talking, and, and honestly, they were terrible friends and terrible counselors, ter terrible comforters, or even more terrible comforters. Uh, but, uh, but they did say a lot of true stuff. And here is one such thing, Job 11, 13. If you prepare your heart, and stretch out your hands towards him. This is great. Uh, prepare, if you prepare your heart and you stretch out your hand towards him, this is speaking about the correct relationship with God. I prepare my heart. And one of those preparations is, of course, humility. And I stretch out my hand towards him. And the other one, the other, the other preparation of my heart uh, is, is, is purity, actually. Now, I'm not talking and we're not talking about um, you know, uh, you know, faultless perfection and, uh, and, and absolute perfection in the believer's life. Because if that were a possibility, uh, 1 John 1, 7 and 1 John 1, 9 just wouldn't be in the Bible. Uh, but it is there because God knew we would fail. Um, it's not, I'm not trying to tell you that it's okay and you should fail, but, uh, but it is sadly unavoidable. Uh, but let me just read on Job 11, 14. Uh, so let me read the whole thing. If you prepare your heart and stretch out your hand towards him, if iniquity be in your hand, put it far away. Let not wickedness dwell in your tabernacles. So that's, that's two things. That's about, that's about uh, iniquity in my hand. I have a choice to make. Do I eat it or do I throw it away? Do I take it to heart or do I keep it far from me? Um, and the other thing is, uh, you know, I do not want it to dwell in my house, in my tent. I do not want it to take hold and, and, and live in my life. Now that's seeking God right. There are these two things and humility and, and purity. And the two are actually very, very connected. Um, but, you know, but this is one thing that will help us seek God. Oftentimes a believer is kept away from an intimate fellowship with God, an intimate, broken, joyful fellowship with God because the believer allows sin in their lives uh, to, to dwell there in their tabernacle, some iniquity, something, uh, some emotional rebellion against truth is allowed to dwell in their home, in their, in their heart, in their life, in their family, in their, in their, in their home where they live. Um, Hebrews 1, 9, you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. And this is talking about seeking God that way, uh, loving right and righteousness and hating iniquity. And this is, this is part of that seeking God. We are not like there is a list of to do and do not do. You know, it's not like Christian life is not like that. Christian life is I want my, my God to be real in my life. I want him to speak to me, to touch me, to lead me, to give to me, to add to me. I, I want to be in, how does it say? I want to be anointed with the oil of gladness above my fellows. That's how I want to live. You wouldn't, you? We all do. And then I say to the list that I shouldn't do. I say, yeah, you know, I say, I'm not, I, you know, I just want iniquity out of my life. I don't need a list. I just don't want stuff in my life that would hinder me from that fellowship. And this is one of the true descriptions of brokenness, uh, loving righteousness and hating iniquity. Uh, and then there are amazing, beautiful consequences 
consequences to it. And they are joyful consequences. The oil of gladness above your fellows. Do not think for a moment that brokenness is a, you know, is a sour and dour face, you know, like Christian, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm so broken. I am seeking my God and my life is, oh, oh I want to cry every day. And this, this is not, you know, this is not the picture. This is speaking about Jesus. You loved righteousness. You hated iniquity. And therefore you had exceeding joy above all your fellows. And wouldn't you want that life? I definitely want that life. So for that, I'm willing to say, bye-bye, my iniquities. I'm not interested in you. And I want to walk with my God rather. Uh, God bless you with that truth today. I trust it is a blessing for your day.